Welcome back to Math and English Sessions with Cynthia and Gills. I am Adria Stewart, Head of the Languages Department at Kingston Technical High School. Today, I will be breaking down the structure of the Cynthia and Gills English Skills exam. Let's get started. Now, we're going to start today by looking at this quote that talks about the importance of practice. Practice means to perform over and over in the face of all obstacles, some acts of vision, of faith, of desire. Practice is a means of inviting the perfection desired. I want you to visualize the perfection that you want at the end of your City and Guilds exam and realize that practice will get you there. Now today's lesson will focus on the following. By the end of our instruction today, candidates should be able to learn about the components of the City and Guilds English Skills examination. You should also obtain some very valuable examination tips, gain insights from the 2019 City and Guilds chief examiner's report and learn about the benefits of this examination. Additionally, you will be more prepared for success in the 2020 City and Guilds English Skills examination. Now you may be wondering, why City and Guilds? What are the benefits? Well, with the intervention of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, City and Guilds has achieved the following formal endorsements. Heart Trust NTA, Jamaica Constabulary Force, Ministry of Public Services, Jamaica Employers Federation, University Council of Jamaica. And of course, you will get certification that can be used to further your studies and to gain employment. City and Guilds uses a thematic approach and the theme for 2020 is media and communications. And I'm sure that you already know this theme. The examination has two major components. We have the speaking and listening components, and some persons may call that the orals, and we have the reading and writing component. The speaking and listening component is worth one third of your overall marks, and the reading and writing component values two thirds. Why City and Gills? We believe that students must have a terminal examination that fills the current gap. And yes, there is a gap. City and Guilds offers a viable alternative with portability, high pedigree and great currency. English skills is appealing for these three main reasons. The first one is that it is cohesive. It uses a thematic approach and this is used annually. And you have already been exposed to the theme for 2020, which is media and communications. It is culturally relevant. It is an international exam, but every year the themes that are the theme that is chosen is culturally relevant. It is something that you can always relate to. And it is comprehensive. It has a staged approach, so therefore you have three exams: stage one, stage two, and stage three. It engages all language art skills: speaking and listening and reading and writing. Let's have a look at the syllabus. The English skills has three stages. And as I have said before, you have the speaking and writing, and this one is externally set and marked. So the papers are set in the UK, they are shipped to Jamaica, you sit your exams here, and the papers are sent back to the UK to be marked, and your certification comes directly from the UK. The speaking and listening component, it is internally assessed. So your teacher is going to be your assessor, and the head of the languages department at your school will be your internal verifier. Now you will do one integrated and thematic assessment covering reading and writing, and it includes detailed reading and extended writing. You will also do one integrated speaking and listening assessment, which includes a listening task, group discussion, presentation, reflection, and evaluation. Let's take a glimpse at all three stages. At stage one, you will be exposed to comprehension passages and, and related tasks that ask you to identify the author's purpose, focus on organizational features, do form filling, use image to extract meaning, use your dictionary. And this is the only English exam that I know where you are allowed to take a dictionary and a thesaurus. You will focus on vocabulary, capitalization, spelling, and grammar. And of course, we have to use a British spelling. Then your continuous writing task will require you to write either a letter, a report, an instructional manual, or a leaflet. 
Let's take a look at stage two. And as we go to the various stages, the work gets more challenging, more complex, more advanced. So at stage two, you are exposed to two specimen papers. You have two source documents, rather. And the related task will require you to identify various types of informative discourse, use and function of images. Many, many images are used in our source documents. They are going to require you to draw on your summary skills, your organization, talk about organizational features and organizational texts, persuasive devices, your knowledge of vocab and vocabulary expansion activities, which is where the dictionary and the thesaurus comes in. You have capitalization, spelling, and grammar. Your writing task includes either a letter, an article for a newspaper, or a magazine. Then we get to stage three. And stage three is the most complex of the three stages, and it is most closely aligned to CSEC English A. Your comprehension and related tasks will focus on author's purpose, bias, fact and opinion, summary skills, organizational features, extracting meaning from a wide range of texts, functions of images, vocabulary. So you're going to focus on synonyms, roots and affixes and so on. Of course, we're going to pay attention to capitalization, spelling and grammar. Your continuous writing task can take the form of a letter, an article for a magazine or newspaper, multiple step instruction or a speech. Now the speaking and listening activities, stage one and stage two activities are similar. You are required to do a listening comprehension task. So you have, an, you have the opportunity to listen to an audio up to three times and then you're required to answer some questions. Immediately following that or on another day set by your assessor, you will do a group discussion and a reflection. And a reflection. Then stage three, which is more advanced, you will do the listening comprehension. You will also do your group discussion and your reflection and individual presentation plus peer evaluation. The speaking and listening process is under the oversight of City and Guild's external verification. And students who are unsuccessful in their first attempt are permitted to reset this component at no cost to them. This is a great plus. Now, I know you're interested in the grading system, and I must tell you, it is very, very easy to pass your City and Guild's English skills exam. Failure, 0 to 49. Nobody will get that with those grades. Pass is from 50 to 64 percent. Merit, 65 to 84 percent. And I know that everybody wants a distinction, so everybody is going to work for 85 to 100 percent. Let's focus a little on our reading and writing task. So we have our extended writing. At the stage one level, you are required to do one piece of writing, which should be 75 to 100 words long. Now, I know some persons don't like to write more than a paragraph, but if you practice over time, you will get very comfortable and you may even be tempted to write more. But we have to try as best as possible to stick to the word limit. At stage two, you have one extended writing task, 100 to 200 words. And at stage three, 300 to 400 words. Examination requirements. Now for the reading units, candidates should be able to use different strategies to develop vocabulary. And you are allowed to use your dictionary and your thesaurus in the examination. Of course, you can also use context clues. You focus on root words, prefixes, and suffixes. You are also to use different reading strategies. You are also to use different reading strategies to help you to extract meaning from whatever material it is that you are reading. So you definitely have to read for meaning. Under the writing component, candidates should be able to correctly use grammar, punctuation, and spelling. And I must emphasize it must be using the British spelling. Using planning and organization in writing, City and Guilds actually gives you space for planning and they actually give you marks for planning. So it is a plus to spend the time to plan. You, are also, you should also be able to write to communicate sentences, paragraphs, letters, memos, reports, essays, speeches, and articles. This qualification, of course, is competence-based. It's a competence-based exam, unlike the regional exam's concept-based approach. We offer a staged approach that I told you of earlier that allows students to progress with their, within their own capability. So if you're comfortable working at stage one, we recommend that you sit the stage one exam. And after you have attained success, then you move on to stage two. And after you have attained success, you go on to stage three. There are three stages with stage three being most closely aligned to the CSEC exam. 
Each stage is a freestanding single subject with its own certification. So if you so choose, you could end up with three certification for City and Guilds English. Then we have the source document. And the source documents, we are looking at the theme, social media. Right? And that source document, we will explore the source document in our next lesson. I'm just bringing it to your attention. So these are what you may call, some students may call them reading comprehension passages, but these are the materials that you get to read. And most of the activities are based on these source documents. And the source documents and all the activities are based on the theme. And remember our theme, media and communications. Now here's a sample question from one of our papers. It says you are to read document two in the source booklet and answer the following question. And the question is, give two adjectives used to describe the impact of Twitter on global communication. You have to pay very, very keen attention to the instruction. The instruction will tell you which of the source documents you ought to use. And there are times when the instruction will tell you to read all three source documents and then answer this particular question based on that. Here's another one. Which noun could replace the word vernacular? And notice it says, tick the correct answer. Please do not circle, tick in the box provided. Another question asks, which phrase in the last paragraph could be used as a caption for the image? You are asked for a phrase, not an entire sentence. And if you give an entire sentence, you will not be awarded the mark. What has the chief examiner to say? Well, from last year's examinations, the chief examiner is saying that time management continues to be an issue for candidates across all three stages. Students are given two hours to complete the reading and writing exam. We are encouraging you to manage your time well so that you, end, you cover all areas and you have enough time to proofread your work so that you can get the best possible score and get that distinction that you are aiming for. Another thing is that simple error in the reading sections are often due to the question not being read carefully, right? And to extract the correct answer. I want to encourage you to spend quality time to read the questions carefully so that you can give the appropriate answer. We don't want to lose not even a mark. So let's recap what we have covered so far. We have mentioned that the city and guilds English skills examination is offered in three stages. We have stage one, stage two, and stage three. At stages one and two, you are exposed to two source documents. At stage three, you are exposed to three. And all the source documents are based on the theme. All the questions that you will be asked are based on the theme for the year. And all that you will do for the speaking and listening component will be based on the theme. So when you participate in your group discussion, you're going to be speaking about media and communications. When you have do your presentation, your three to five minutes individual presentation at stage three, you're going to be talking about media and communications. So please bear that in mind that the integrated approach is seen in every single thing that we do for the city and guilds exam both in the speaking and listening component and the reading and writing component so the examination has two major components speaking and listening and some people may feel comfortable saying i have my english orals and this one is internally assessed the date is set you are informed you are given your topic one week in advance. You are given your subtopic from the broad topic one week in advance, which means that you have sufficient time to prepare for your presentation. So you get your presentation, you have your listening comprehension to do, and then you have your group discussion, and those at stage three have their individual presentation, their peer evaluation, and their reflection. I will keep repeating the theme, and by now you should know it very, very well. It is media and communications. You have already been exposed to the theme. So my word of advice to you is to do as much research as you possibly can on the theme so that when you go in the examination room, you are already quite knowledgeable. Many times students have a problem participating in group discussion and they have a problem 
doing the writing task or the extended task because they do not have enough information. Well, City and Guilds has told you from the beginning of the academic year that the theme is media and communications. Therefore, you have a whole lot of time to prepare. So my word of encouragement to you is to prepare to the best of your ability. Now, I'm also encouraging you to make sure that you read thoroughly all the source documents that you are given in the exam and ensure that the questions are correctly interpreted. You also need to pay attention to details. Details are very important and ensure that instructions are carefully followed. A simple instruction like one that says circle means circle, not underline. In our next lesson, we are going to focus on some comprehension strategies. We know that some students have challenges understanding what they read. And so we are going to spend some time to talk about some strategies that you can use to help you to extract meaning from whatever material you are exposed to. One of the things I will tell you from now is that immediately before you start reading any material, just glance at the topic, the subtopics to get a general idea for what it is about and think about what you already know about that topic and bring that knowledge into what you're going to read. You may find that you're diverted to something else or the material is about the same thing that you had in mind. But always, always think about what you already know about your topic. I'm also going to expose you to some specimen papers and I'm sure that you have already been exposed to some, right? But I will expose you to some more. I must encourage you to manage your time very, very well. You have two hours for your reading and writing exam. You should be familiar with the examination paper and the structure of the paper before you get in the exam room. So make sure that you manage your time so well that you're able to finish ahead of time and you have sufficient time to proofread your work and to feel relaxed and to develop that confidence knowing that yes, you have done your best and you will attain that distinction. Remember, your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. We don't want to get in the habit of procrastinating. So please bear that in mind. All that you can do today in preparation for your exam, I am encouraging you to do all that you can do. I know that many of you are busy having your online classes. I know that by now some of you are relaxing, but you have passed papers, you have gotten good guidance from your teachers. So I'm encouraging you to make very, very, very good use of your time. Practice, don't procrastinate. Now, if you believe it, you can achieve it. And I want you to repeat it with me. If I believe it, I can achieve it. Believe you can. That's my message to you. City and Gills has done its best to ensure that you are adequately prepared for your examinations. So they have been emailing specimen papers or what you may want to call past papers to most persons. All right, if you have not yet received your email, you can check the City and Guilds website. You can go to the website and you can gain access to the papers that are, are there. If not, you can ask your teachers to email you copies of the papers. We have eight sets of papers that you can use, and I'm sure that you would have been exposed to some before. So please make sure that you visit the website to gain access, and the website is projected on the screen. City and Gills has emailed students who have been registered to sit their math and English exams on June 11, 2020, a set of eight practice papers so that you may have direct access to practice. And once you have done your practice exercise, send the, the information or send your work to your teachers so that they can mark and give you feedback and use the time that you have at home wisely. Use the time to improve on those weak areas. Use the time to get as much help as you possibly can so that you can overcome the weak areas and so that you can work to the best of your ability. My word of advice to you, practice, practice, practice practice. That's all the time we have for today.